Hey developers, today we're gonna look at three VS Code extensions that I think you guys will find interesting and useful and also will make you a little bit more productive in your job. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and learn all about them. By the way, if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer, have over 10 years of software development experience. And on this channel, I just teach little tips and tricks on JavaScript, development frameworks, IDEs, and I'm also a huge Vue.js fan. If you guys are looking for more information, there's some links below on some of my favorite courses and some courses that I've created. So right here, you can see here I have Visual Studio Code open. And the first extension I wanna talk about is one called Git Lens. So they call it Supercharge the Git Capabilities Built into Visual Studio Code. So you can see here, uh, has it's been constantly updated, has a lot of cool stuff. It just uploaded, updated in July. So let's just jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and open my Explorer. And what it basically does, after you install it and you restart your Visual Studio Code, it takes a look at every file that you're in. And you can see up here, you get this little uh, indication of when the last time the file was edited and who the author of it was. So it connects to your Git. It looks at the history, it looks at the branches, it looks at everything that you've done. And at any point in time when you're on a branch and you go to a file, you can basically look back in the history, do diffs, and figure out like what changes were done. So you can click anywhere here, on, like on this file, I see Eric Hanchet four months ago. I get, this, I get these three little buttons here, so I can actually do a diff. I can do an open changes from the last revision. I can actually click here, and this will open it up in GitHub and show me the actual changes that I did which is really cool. And so you get a, a lot of capabilities here and you can also do other things. You can go back a revision if you wanted to, you can open the file up, you can open the file in GitHub, open the revision in GitHub, apply changes. So I'll show you here and you can go to each individual line of the file and look at individual changes, which is really cool. Uh, you can also see if you click here, this will give you the diff inside Visual Studio Code and then you can kind of make changes and actually save it if you want. So this is a really cool thing you can do. So once you get into large projects and there's a lot of people working on it and you have a lot of commits going, a lot of PRs, you'll find out that your files are changing quite often and eventually what will happen is someone will break something and then you'll have to figure out who broke it and why and using Git Lens and just going opening up the file and looking at the version history is really nice and, and really uh, will save you time in the long term. So I would highly recommend using Git Lens and then using that to uh, look over your file. So the next extension I wanna talk about, open up my extensions here, is one for uh, REST. So there is a REST, um, pretty popular extension called REST Client. So if you're in any sort of project, you might realize that at some point that you need to talk to a back end. And of course, the problem with talking to a back end is that you need to know the exact information you need to send to the back end. Is it a put? Is it a get request? Is it a post request? Is it a delete request? You need to know the parameters that you need to send over. You need to know uh, all the information about it. And then you want to look at the responses that come back and make sure that it's up and running. Now, modern day development, there's a lot of ways this is accomplished. Sometimes people create something called Swagger documents, which are ways that you can document your API. It's really simple. Uh, other times, if you don't have a Swagger, a lot of people use Postman, which is a really simple tool to put in your, in, uh, your HTTP requests and then make sure that they're working correctly and get the information. Uh, some, if you're old school, you might be using curl still but this kind of adds some of those features into an extension that you can use inside your Visual Studio Code. So you can see here REST client, you can send cancel rerun HTTP requests, you can send curl commands, you can do authentication. It also gives you these dynamic variables for GUID and date time and domain. Uh, so it has a lot of usages. So I'll go ahead and show you an example of how to use it. So we'll just copy one of their examples first. So you copy it here. I'm gonna open up a new file. I'm gonna paste it. And the good thing about here is you actually wanna uh, save it and save it with the dot, we'll call this example, 
.http or .rest. And once you save it like that, you'll see here, now we have options to actually send requests. So what you wanna do is create a file, save it with the .http request, and then you can actually test things out. So you can click uh, send request here, and you'll actually, right here, here's the sample output. Obviously example.com doesn't have anything, but you can see here, the, here's the output from the command and the response. But you don't even have to do it this way. You can do it even simpler. So if we put three hash marks, we can just put an HTTP S, I don't know, like CNN.com, com. And you can see here it has syntax highlighting. If you click here for send request, it'll just assume that you're gonna send it right here. It'll tell you the response time on it, 361 milliseconds, and then it'll display the output of it, which is really nice. You can save that output. And it actually, if I like, this is content type application JSON, but if I do content type, you can see here it auto completes for you. It has syntax highlighting application JSON. And then you can, in this post request, you can put in the name and title and what you're gonna send to it, which is really awesome. Another feature you can do is you can right click on it and you can do generate code snippet. So if I do generate code snippet, now I can say, okay, I wanna create this for Node.js. And it'll say, what library do you wanna use? HTTP request a unirest. So let's say HTTP. Now you have the code that you would need to send this request in using the HTTPS library inside Node and it automatically generates it for you, which is really cool. Uh, you can also do no, uh, JavaScript. So if I do generate code snippet and then do JavaScript, I have either XML HTTP request or jQuery. So you can see here, this is how I do it through XML HTTP request. And that's um, really simple. I mean, this would be great too for mocking. So if you wanted to connect to your backend and then just quickly save the output, you could do that really easily. And you, cause once you run the send the request, oops, uh, send request. Headers must have header to name, header value. Oops, I need to put a space here. It does need spaces between these things. Then I can always click the save button here and then save it somewhere, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of things in here. I'm just touching like barely the surface of this. You can also copy the request as curl. So if we do this and we paste it, you can see here's the curl command. So I can do it that way as well, which is really nice. I can actually paste my own curl commands in. Uh, so yeah, you definitely a lot of features here. Works really well just to quickly connect to an API. Um, you can send different information. So I, think, I believe it has a bunch of um, accept char sets, a bunch of headers you can send over, everything you expect, authorization. So definitely really nice plugin uh, extension that you can use to just quickly do HTTP requests. And like I said, I'm just touching the service area. It could do probably a lot more. So the last extension I wanna talk about is just a fun one. It's called Emoji Sense. And I'll make sure the links here for all these are down below. So this one just is fun because you can just put colon in the name of the emoji and it'll just go ahead and automatically add it. So you can see quickly insert emojis using the colon smile syntax supported by GitHub. Um, if you're on Slack, this is probably, you're probably used to this as well. And then you can also add some configurations to it. So I already have it installed, but if I open up just a random file here and I put in hello, you can see here as soon as I put the colon, I have auto, auto completion. So I could put uh, like cat. Hello cat. So that actually puts the emoji character for cat in here. So there's hundreds of them. So if you, this might be a good thing to like inside your comments to be a little cute. You can put some of these in here. Um, like, I don't know, just whatever you want. So it's, it's just a little fun extension. I thought after those two, you probably want something a little different. So those are my three extensions that I really like right now on Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys are using. I did, uh, I've done a few of these videos and extensions. There's so many great ones. Actually, I have a list of other extensions that people have recommended. Some I've used, some I haven't used. So I think I, I might do a, another video on this and see what you guys think. 
and see what other extensions you can use. I mean, I've been using tons of just autocomplete type extensions, snippet extensions, things like that. But Git Lens and this REST library are pretty awesome. If you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click subscribe and click that like button. And, uh, you know, for you guys, the super fans have watched all the way to the end, I appreciate you. But uh, I'm looking for maybe one or two people. I need reviews for my new book, Vue.js in Action. It's my new book on Vue.js. Uh, it's amazing. It's over 300 pages long. Um, I actually had Chris Fritz do the forward for it. He is the um, one of the core contributors for Vue.js, and he helped um, look it over too, which is awesome. If you guys are interested in getting a copy of it, I'd ask you to do one thing. If you get a copy, to make sure you write a review on my Amazon site, if you, um, an honest review on the Amazon site about it. So to do that, if you're interested in writing a review, you would like a review copy, um, in the comments below, tell me a little bit about the extensions that you like and uh, mention something about the book and I'll randomly pick somebody in the next uh, couple days probably maybe by Friday, one or two people to get a free copy of my book. So let me know guys. Thanks.